Well, good evening, everyone. Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. Good evening, everyone. There we go. There we go. Uh, welcome to our annual sickle cell illumination ceremony at City Hall. It is an honor to be here with you. I will tell you on the uh, as we get started. Uh, I didn't have a red tie, so I asked one better. I asked the folks to turn the city hall red, uh, since I don't have a red tie. Um, no, but I'm just so grateful that uh, everyone would think it not robbery to, to be here and to join us as we uh, focus on um, bringing awareness to a um, uh, an illness that uh, infects so many folks in our community. This is council's third annual sickle cell illumination event during the Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Um, SCD is an inherited blood disorder that can lead to kidney disease, to stroke, which disproportionately affects folks that look like myself as African Americans in our community. That's why we organize blood drives with special screenings for first time donors who are people of color. These screenings test for hemoglobin S, a key marker of the disease. Despite years of research, there still is no cure. I want to thank our leader uh, on council for uh, championing this issue. Um, uh, council member Bankston, um, he has uh, brought a renewed energy to this conversation and make sure that we are focused on it. Um, I would be remiss if I did not uh, recognize our queen of council, council member, uh, not council member. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. Uh, my friend Habiba Bankston. Um, yes, would you please help me recognize the better half of the Bankston duo? No, 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 no. Um, but what I will say quickly is that um, with council member Bankston's advocacy for uh, sickle cell awareness, he really is building on um, the shoulders and the legacy and the work of council member uh, and former president pro tem uh, Priscilla Tyson, whose son uh, has battled with uh, and has been a fighter with sickle cell. And so council has had a long tradition of making sure that we are educating our community and showing up uh, for those uh, who may be impacted. So again, uh, on behalf of a grateful council, we're so excited for you to be here tonight, for us to bring awareness uh, and for us to celebrate community and uh, resilience. Uh, with that, I wanna turn it over to my colleague and friend, Council Member Weich. Well, I knew Councilmember Bankston was going to show up with his best red tie on and best suit on, so I just tried to try to copy it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, he is definitely the fashionista of the council chambers. So, <laughs> uh, it is my honor to introduce our 2024 Priscilla R. Tyson Health Champion Award recipient. Um, and I almost made the mistake of ruining the surprise when I met her the first time. But I don't think she heard me, so I think we're good. Uh, Ms. Gwendolyn Macon Beck. Ms. Macon Becks. And let me just say, Ms. Macon Beck, I did not want to surprise you. I just found out that that was what we were doing. Uh, but Ms. Megan Beck's dedication to sickle cell advocacy spans over five decades, and her trailblazing efforts have transformed the landscape of health care for individuals living with sickle cell disease in Ohio. As the first appointed director of the Ohio Sickle Cell Project Initiative under the Ohio Department of Health, Ms. Makenbeck established the model for newborn screening and reporting that is still followed statewide. Her work with the ECCO Family Health Center, the first federally qualified health center in Central Ohio, further solidified her legacy as a pioneer in healthcare access for underserved communities. She worked closely with the great Jewel Barron to build lasting resources for those living with sickle cell disease. And she remains the longest serving employee in this initiative, actively serving as an adult case manager today. Her visionary leadership has been instrumental in shaping Ohio's sickle cell programs and has touched countless lives. Ms. Megan Beck's tireless effort from organizing the first medical advisory committee with Dr. William Hicks to coordinating statewide educational outreach 
have empowered families, healthcare professionals, and patients alike. She continues to inspire through her passion for service at 91 years young. as a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and pillar of the Central Ohio community. She remains a living example of the power of dedication and love for humanity. Ms. Makenbeck has not only been a healthcare advocate, but a beacon of hope and strength for generations of families affected by sickle cell disease. It is with deep admiration and respect that we honor Ms. Gwendolyn Makenbeck tonight as our Priscilla R. Tyson Health Champion a woman who has devoted her life to making a difference, one family, one patient, and one community at a time. Please join me in celebrating the legacy of this remarkable woman. What can I say? The Lord has done great things for me. We're off, I'm glad. I'm so glad to be here this evening. In the presence of all these individuals that are care for one another, care for people with sickle cell disease and other minority illnesses. We started at the Echo Family Health Center somewhere in, as a volunteer in 1970. I was working in the operating rooms and was recruited and we started a program, the first program funded in the United States for sickle cell disease. And here I am tonight. Amen. Amen. Looking at people, the individuals with whom I've worked and those who have cared for and have cared for me as well. I am so blessed yes, for this moment. So I just give God the praise. Amen. Thank you all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's wonderful to see all of you here tonight on such a beautiful occasion. This is actually one of my, my favorite days of the year here in, in the city of Columbus. It means a lot to see um, this building lit up in red just to showcase the city's commitment to such a critical issue that we're dealing with in our community. So I want to take a second to thank um, Council Member Bankson, who also just happens to be my husband, <laughs> um, and all members of Columbus City Council for your continued efforts to bring awareness to such a critical issue impacting our community, and also 
for calling members of our community to action by hosting blood drives and encouraging people to give blood to support individuals living with sickle cell disease. As someone who has battled with sickle cell all of my life and I've been receiving blood transfusions for the last 19 years, I am personally incredibly grateful um, for your efforts and the work that you continue to do, so thank you. So it is both an honor and a deeply personal moment for me to introduce the recipient of this year's Sickle Cell Warrior Award, Miss Joanna Floyd. <laughs> a surprise from what I from what they shared with me this is a surprise to you and um, as as a fellow sickle cell warrior Joanna and I have had the opportunity to cross paths at doctor's appointments uh, but also in the advocacy work that we've both been doing in this community to raise awareness around sickle cell so I am beyond excited to be able to to share this award with you as someone who lives with sickle cell disease I can tell you that it is a daily battle physically emotionally and mentally it's a life filled with pain episodes, hospital stays, and navigating a world that often doesn't understand the depth of our struggles. But every once in a while, you meet someone who doesn't just survive the battle, they inspire others to keep fighting. Joanna Floyd is that person. <laughs> Amen. Joanna is the founder of Scream, Scream Inc which stands for Sickle Cell Reaching, Empowering, and Motivating, has turned her pain into purpose. She started this support group not just to educate people about sickle cell disease, but to open a window into her world, the raw, unfiltered reality of living with sickle cell. She didn't shy away from showing us the painful moments, the days in the hospital, and the toll it takes on her body and spirit. She allowed us into her life to show the true face of sickle cell disease, making it real for so many people who had no idea what it meant to live with this illness. But Joanna didn't stop there. She organized fundraisers, assisted with blood drives, and used social media to bring awareness to this disease in ways that no one else had. Her posts aren't just a record of her journey, but a tribute to the many sickle cell warriors we've lost along the way. While she mourns them, she keeps their memory alive, reminding us all of the strength and resilience it takes to be a sickle cell champion. Even as she endures her own personal struggles, Joanna continues to be a guiding light for others offering support and solace to families who are grieving, sometimes while she herself is grieving. Her legacy of advocacy and selflessness is something that cannot be measured in words alone. It is felt deeply in the hearts of those she has touched, including my own. Joanna Floyd, you embody what it means to be a true warrior. Your strength, courage, and commitment to this community are an inspiration to all of us. It is with immense pride and respect that I present you with this year's Sickle Cell Warrior Award. You are truly a champion in every sense of the word. Thank you so much. Um, hello. <clears throat> Uh, first, I would like to give an honor to God that he is the head of my life. I would not be here if it wasn't for him. Amen. So I honor him. I want to thank everyone uh, at City Council for this award. I want to thank Miss <laughs> Annie and um, OSHA, Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association, Miss Macon, and uh, Miss Habiba for that, those beautiful words. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say I did start Scream um, about 10 years ago. And um, it has been an active, but I have still been trying to do the work. The work never stops. We must continue to uh, do the work for sickle cell and for us as patients, for us as advocates, so we can get further and find a cure and support one another. I would like to also thank my family, who's been there every step of the way, my natural family as well as my spiritual family. 
Um, I would like to thank the doctors and nurses and that came out to support me. Thank you everyone for this award and uh, as long as I'm breathing, I'm still going to uh, push sickle cell and try to advocate for us all around the world. Thank you so much. All right, let's give another round of applause to all of our award recipients. Um, uh, I'm so excited. We started these uh, awards uh, when I first took office. And um, so I have not been, I can't claim that this is the third annual illumination of City Hall, because if, if that gets back to uh, former member Priscilla Tyson, then I'm going to be in trouble. So she's been lighting City Hall red, but we wanted to take a step further. That's why we named uh, an award in her honor, uh, because it's not simply about sickle cell, but it's about her legacy and the work that she has done around championing all kinds of health issues. But it also wanted to be unique and offer uh, that award to someone who's battling with sickle cell, this disease that uh, you know impacts so many uh, Americans uh, that are black and brown and look like us, to let them know uh, that regardless of how uh, minuscule this disease may seem to the medical community and to the rest of the community, that you are seen heard and valued here in the city of Columbus. So let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you so much for your uh, tireless advocacy. Uh, thank you so much for all that you are doing. Ms. Gwendolyn, I'm just amazed that you're still doing casework. I, I, that is amazing to me. Um, I'm gonna call an audible here because I wanted to, we also every year pass a resolution uh, to recognize September as sickle cell Awareness Month. Um, and so this year, we are presenting that resolution to Miss Annie Womack and the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association. Miss Annie, I'm looking for you. I'm looking on the wrong side. Come on up here and give us a few remarks and receive this year's resolution. You know, I, get, I never get tired of this. So first of all, Ms. Macon, you forgive me. I just told her to show up. And so she scripted the whole thing. I'm going to have somebody else write, a, write something. I'm not going to talk. But the, it's important. And I thank all of you for coming. And you know, sickle cell is near and dear to a lot of us. For those of us who have people in our family, for those of us who have seen our loved ones suffer, to be ridiculed and talked about and diminished because they couldn't do what everybody else could do. So I fight because, you know, we talk about in this political realm, whatever, I don't want to tell you who to vote for, but Shirley Chisholm, the first yeah. African American to put their name in to run for politics and the presidency said, you know, if they don't give you a seat at the table, you bring a folding chair. Right. Elizabeth Warren said, if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. And Barack Obama said, it's not enough just to have a seat at the table, but to start sitting at the head of that table. And that's what we're doing. We're moving Ohio to the head of the sickle cell discussions. We meet with pharmaceutical companies before they develop medication. We meet with legislators to talk about drugs, PBM, copay accumulators. We talk about all those things, not just we are, as Ms. Macon says, we are sickle cell and health because we have to talk about the entire package. So on behalf of the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association, our board of directors, our employees, our wonderful employee and the families that we serve. We are so proud to receive this resolution on Sickle Cell Month. Thank you so much.
And thank you again to Miss Annie Womack. And so, and she's serious about this, y'all. Now, all y'all know I'm preaching to the choir, but I've seen her at work um, and in rooms and talking about this. And now, Miss uh, Annie, I just got back, uh, and I wanted to share this with you. I just got back from the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, their annual legislative conference. And for the first time in the CBC's history, they had a dedicated panel about sickle cell. And I had to make sure I was at that. Um, and specifically, they were talking about the cure that we know is out there, which is gene therapy. Now, we talk about sickle cell, as you all know, because there's no universal cure. But then the access to that cure is so insurmountable to the folks that suffer from sickle cell disease. And so what our next fight is going to be, and Ms. me and Ms. Annie, we're going to take it up. We're going to make sure that in Ohio and Medicaid, that they make sure that they pay for that gene therapy treatment. Because we, this is something that is curable. This is something that we can end in our lifetime here in the United States, the richest, most powerful country in the world. And we have folks that are suffering from this disease because of access to health care. That's unacceptable based off of their zip code or based off of their income. And we, that's our next fight that we got to take up. And so I was so proud to see that our Congressional Black Caucus, uh, who was once led by the great Joyce Beatty, had this on their agenda. So she is not here tonight, but I want to thank Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. I've had these conversations with her about sickle cell, so I know it was her championing as well to make sure that that was on their agenda. Um, so with that, uh, we've come to the close of our uh, event, and we're about to light City Hall red. But before I want to do recognize other council members that are here, my partner and good council member Lourdes Barroso de Padilla is here. I know she had to get home to her little one, but we had Council Member Green, who chairs our Health and Human Services Committee. She was here with us as well. Let's give her a round of applause. And also, I see my colleague, Council Member Emmanuel Remy, chair of our Public Safety Committee. Uh, and again, on behalf of all of my colleagues on Council, uh, all of them couldn't be here with us today, but they're so excited uh, to light City Hall red as well. Uh, so as we come to a close, on this remarkable uh, sickle cell, annual sickle cell illumination. Um, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to each of you for being here tonight. Your presence, it speaks volumes, not just in support of the sickle cell community, but the broader cause of health equity in marginalized communities. The fight against sickle cell disease is just one of many health issues that disproportionately impacts underserved communities. And by standing here tonight, you're making a powerful statement for change. Uh, to our incredible honorees, Ms. Gwendolyn Macon Beck and to Ms. Joanna Floyd, let's get him one more round of applause. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for your dedication and relentless spirit that have left a profound impact on this community. You are champions not just for those living with sickle cell, but all of us working towards healthier, more equitable futures. Your legacies will continue to inspire and guide us all. And I'd um, also like to thank our wonderful partners uh, for this month, including the American Red Cross, uh, and also, yes, yeah, we can give a clap, a hand clap for them. I also want to thank um, our partners in the administration, the City of Columbus Department of Human Resources. They work every single year to coordinate all of the blood drives. I gave them an ambitious goal this year that we were going to do 150 units in uh, September. We are uh, close to that goal, and I'm saying that uh, today we're going to crush that goal. Uh, so if you're in the audience and you can give blood and you're eligible to give blood, now don't y'all be coming up with no excuses like, I ain't eat this morning. Make sure you go eat, okay? Make sure you eat some green, um, healthy vegetables and make sure your hemoglobin's up when you go there. Make sure you go donate. It is important for us to donate. All blood, yes, is universal and the same, but everyone's blood is unique. And we need more in black and brown blood in our blood supply because we are one of the number one users of it. So we have to make sure we have a diverse blood supply. It's like putting 87 uh, gas inside of a Cadillac that's supposed to have 89. Y'all know what I'm saying? Okay? So you got to make sure that it matches 100%. So that's why we need more diverse blood givers to get out there. So I want to thank again Red Cross and all of our partners at the city. Uh, also, a special thanks to DJ Sneaks. DJ Sneaks is over there on the ones and twos, keeping us uplifted. And then one of my favorite restaurants in the city, Flavor 91, is here. 
And so if you had, didn't get a chance to get a bite, make sure you go over there and see Moses and our great friends at Flavor 91. Um, so again, tonight we have come together not just to raise awareness of sickle cell disease, but to advocate for health disparities affecting our communities. I always say tonight is about sickle cell, uh, and lighting the city hall is red. It's more than sickle cell. For me, it is important because my wife, Habiba Bankston, is a sickle cell warrior. And every single month, she relies on people that give blood. And she relies on those treatments. Um, but sickle cell is really a canary in the coal mine. And so tonight when we light the city hall red, it is for sickle cell, but it's also for all of those other hidden diseases that we don't talk about. For all of those other diseases that disproportionately affect black and brown people. So that when you see red, I want you to think sickle cell, but I also want you to think about our community and how much more work that we have to do. And so with that, we're gonna light city hall red. Can I get all of the honorees and my council colleagues up here on stage? Well, on the steps. We'll just line you guys up right here. again to reflect on the strength, the resilience, and the unity of our community. We all ready? From 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy Sickle Cell Awareness Month, everybody. Thanks for being here.